In Ezekiel 22, 30, we read, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Therefore have I poured out mine indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God. In this matter of standing in the gap before God, we found out that there comes a time when God must destroy the land if he cannot get anybody who will be willing to stand on his side and stand with him long enough to change the situation in the land. And God said, I couldn't find such a man in Ezekiel today. Therefore, God said, the only choice I have is to recompense their own way upon their own heads. It was not a matter of God pouring his wrath out because he wanted to, but it was a matter of the fact that the land cried out so unto him that he had to do so. We noticed already that Moses and Moses and Aaron in a certain time stood before God when God needed a man. They answered God's call. They came to the foreground and God spared Israel in that day. This is the very plea that God's making to America right now. Will you, men and women, boys and girls, all across the land, will you stand before God? Will you stand in the gap and make up the hedge in order that God will not have to destroy the land? You say, but preacher, what kind of a person would God need? I'm not qualified. I don't know how to stand in the gap. I don't know what to do. Well, Isaiah chapter 22 will tell you what kind of a person it is that God needs. And the qualifications are simple, but the response determ is determined by what kind of a heart that you have. In the first place, Isaiah says that God is looking for somebody who is willing to have courage to stand in hard times. Look at that in the book of Isaiah chapter 22 verse 1. The burden of the valley of vision. What aileth thee now, that thou art wholly gone up to the housetops, thou that art full of stirs, a tumultuous city, a joyous city? Thy slain men are not slain with the sword, nor dead in battle. This sounds like today's newspaper in every city in America. God said, what's ailing you? He said, it looks like everybody's on top of the house looking down in the street. Well, why is everybody on the house top looking down in the street? Because they are looking down at the street at the dead folks that are laying there. And God said, well, there's no battle going on in the streets of Israel right now. Why is everybody looking down at the dead folks? They, they weren't slain in battle. That's exactly what's going on in America. We're looking at dead folks in streets across America today. They're not killed because a war is going on. They're killed because of the riots that are breaking out across the cities of America. Very few weeks or months pass by, but what there are folks dead across America because of the riots and the bitterness that's breaking out in our cities. This is an hour and a day like it was in Isaiah's day that God's looking for somebody who will stand in the midst of dead folks. Notice the second thing that he said. All of thy rulers are fled together. They are bound by the archers. All that are found in thee are bound together which have fled from far. If you're going to stand, Isaiah said, you'll have to stand in, the, in spite of the fact that the rulers are fled together. The rulers are not willing to stand. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to stand for God in America today, you're going to have to stand for God in spite of the fact that people in high positions of leadership in the local level, in the state level, and the national level are not willing to stand today. Instead of standing, our rulers are running. The first time a riot breaks out, the legislatures of our country say we must pass action, we must do something, we must do something. What does that sound like? It's as if a man came and put a gun in the back of the rulers and said you'll do this or else. And that's exactly what's happening. Let somebody get slain, let somebody get hurt, let a riot break out, and the leaders say we got to do something, we got to do something. Folks, in a time like this, there must be those who are willing to stand, not run, but stand in the gap and speak for God and act for God in an hour like this. Isaiah said, Lord, you can count on me. Therefore said I, look away from me. I will weep bitterly. Labor not to comfort me because of the spoiling of the daughter of my people. Isaiah said, Lord, you can count on me while others are running. I'll be weeping for you. For it is a day of trouble a day of treading down, a day of perplexity by the Lord God of hosts in the valley of vision, breaking down the walls and of crying 
to the mountains, and Elam bare the quiver with chariots of men and horsemen, and Kerr uncovered the shield. Isaiah said in every street across the cities of the land in his day, the walls are being broken down, chaos on every side. Folks, if you're going to stand for God, you can't wait for it to be peaceful in America. If you're going to stand for God, you've got to stand in a day of trouble. Notice what he said in verse 7. It shall come to pass that thy choicest valleys shall be full of chariots, and the horsemen shall set themselves in array at the gate. He said it's a day and an hour when the horsemen stand in the streets of the city. What would that be the equivalent of today? The federal troops called out to stand in the streets of America. It'll get to where you can't go to a big city in America without a National Guardman standing there at the street saying, what business do you have being in this town? Why are you coming into town? Very seldom does a week pass by in America today, but what the National Guard or the federal troops are called out for some city in America. Folks, do not expect that to get less. It will get more and more unless people stand in the gap who are willing to stand regardless of what happens to them personally in an hour like this. If we are not willing to stand in an hour like this, then we shall find America shall be trodden down. She shall be destroyed. So, ladies and gentlemen, are you willing to take courage? Are you willing to stand for God even though the day's troubled? Even though the rulers have fled together? Even though the top leadership say we can't do anything to stem the tide? Let's notice in the next place what we've got to stand, what kind of day we've got to stand in. He said, He discovered the covering of Judah, and thou didst look in that day to the armor of the house of the forest. Isaiah said it's a day when the people are looking to their guns and ammunition. They're looking to the National Guard. They say we don't care how bad it gets. We can always call out the National Guard. We can always call out the federal troops. But ladies and gentlemen, there will come a day and an hour when there will not be enough troops to go around. There will not be enough guards to send to all the cities of America when a thousand cities are hit at one time. And all over the America they are calling for soldiers to come and stand guard in the streets of America. That hour is not far ahead when many, many cities shall be hit at the same time. We cannot trust in our National Guard. We cannot trust in our federal troops as many would like to do so. God said there's something else that people are trusting in. You have seen also the breaches of the city of David, that there are many. You gathered together the waters of the lower pool. Ye have numbered the houses of Jerusalem, and the houses have ye broken down to fortify the wall. You made also a ditch between the two walls for the water of the old pool. It was a day in Isaiah's day when people said, let's tear down the slums. Let's build new housing areas. Let's build new playgrounds. Let's build them a place, a park to play in. And if we'll do that, that'll solve the problem. And that's exactly what's being done in our day. They're saying, let's get rid of the slums. Let's build new houses. And that'll solve the problem. Ladies and gentlemen, where sin is rampant in the land, I do not care how many houses you build and how many ballparks you build and how many swimming pools you build. That will not solve the problem. God's looking for folks that have got, have got more on their mind than social reconstruction. No matter how much you socialize an individual, how much you do for him that way, unless he solved his problem spiritually, he will still be the same wicked, ungodly creature that he was before. Notice again in verse 11, But ye have not looked unto the maker thereof, neither had respect unto him that fashioned it long ago. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to stand for God, you've got to do what the majority are not doing. They are not looking to the one that made America what she is. Go back and check the history of America. You'll find that America is what she is today because God fashioned her long ago. God niched her out of a wilderness, so to speak, and put a people here who would honor Him and serve Him and have respect for Him. But who's looking to God to solve our problems? Instead, we're looking to social legislation. We're saying that will rehabilitate the people. That will settle the problem. God said, I'm, I'm looking for somebody who will look to me. And then there's a third qualification God's looking for in anybody who's standing in the gap today. Verse 12 says, In that day did the Lord God of hosts call to weeping and the mourning and the baldness and the girding with sackcloth. This is the burden of this message today that you and I will come back and learn how to weep, learn how to cry, how to get in sackcloth and ashes in behalf of God for this country of ours. It's a day to weep, God said. He said, I want weeping. 
I want crying. I want boldness. Not a weeping where every time somebody sees it looks like you've been crying, but a weeping where as it was in the days of Nineveh when from the king to the lowest man they got in the, on their faces in sackcloth and ashes and begged for God to spare the land and to have mercy on their soul. Ladies and gentlemen, can God count on you to weep? You don't have to be an educated person to weep. You don't have to be an orator to weep. You don't have to be a preacher to weep. God's looking for folks who weep today. Can God count on you to weep in this hour? If God can find enough weepers, then God will spare the land. He said to Isaiah later on in the book, He said, The one that I'm delighting in is the one that trembles at my word. God said, I do not despise a broken heart. Ladies and gentlemen, does it disturb you about your sins? Are you disturbed about your sinfulness today? And if you've caught up on weeping in behalf of your sins, can you not weep for our land? A land that has become so corrupt. A land that has become so defiled that the rulers have fled together. When the leaders have come to be a part of the problem, instead of solving the problem, can you not weep? In a day when some Supreme Court leaders in our land have ruled it's all right for women to go with topless bathing suits on for free expression. Can you stand in an hour like that when many pulpits have become extremely silent and become extremely dead against the sin problems that Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel stood up and lashed out against? Can you stand in a day like this? Can you get in your churches, get on your knees and cry out and say, Oh God, spare America. Bring her back to the place where she honors you and honors your day and honors your way and honors your purposes. Ladies and gentlemen, God said, I look for that. But I want you to notice what He said in verse 13 that He got. And behold, joy and gladness, slaying oxen, killing sheep, eating flesh, drinking wine. Let's eat and drink for tomorrow. We shall die. God said, I'm looking for somebody to weep over America. But God said, instead of that, everybody's saying, I don't have time to weep. I don't have time to weep. Let's eat. Let's drink. For tomorrow we shall die. You say, well, preacher, you're saying to us that the communists, it looks like they're about to take over the land. And if that's the case, let me live it up. Let me have a good time now because we'll be dead in a few years. I want you to know God said that's the kind of response I get. I'm looking for somebody to weep and to cry, but instead everybody's having a good time. What do the majority of the people in America do today? They work hard all day and jump in their cars after they get out of work, hasten home so they can turn on the television set and be entertained for four and five hours every night and then go to sleep, get up the next morning, work, hasten home to watch television to be entertained another four or five hours. Folks in America today have reached the point that they are entertained and entertained and entertained. They're having joy and gladness, feasting, but no time for God. No time to serve God. Everybody's living it up. I'm reminded of a man in a certain town not too far from here. Several weeks ago while I was in a meeting, this man invited a lost man to come to the services the next Sunday. The lost man was at the Lord's house on Sunday, but the man who invited him was not. He had gone to entertainment program that Saturday night and he had stayed out so late that he didn't get up in time to go to his church on Sunday morning. The lost man was there. This same man went to the revival meeting next week. He heard the evangelist was going to preach a certain message the next night and he invited the lost man again to come. And the next night at the revival meeting, the lost man was there. But the Christian didn't show up. And when they were, he was asked where he was, he had gone to a dinner that night while the revival was taking place. Suffice it to say that the lost man was not saved. He was not one to Jesus that week. Why? Because the Christian was busy feasting and having a big time with his company and didn't have time to weep before God. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, God's looking for us to weep today. But instead, we've got to be entertained by everyone on the program, no matter who it is, whether it's skeleton bones or whether it's somebody trying to tickle us in any way, that shape or fashion. We let them defy God just so they've got a joke to tell us. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, God's looking today for folks that don't know how to laugh but do know how to weep. Weeping before God, crying out to God when such immorality is in the land, when God's day is desecrated, when such profane use is given to God. Will you weep? This is the only way that God's people have ever spared any land. Weeping, but God said, no, said I'm having a big time. I'm too busy having fun. Many young people today can't afford to weep. 
They can't be a square. Everybody dances, so I dance. Mommy, I've got to go to the prom. All the other kids are going to the prom. Therefore, I've got to go to the prom. I was in a meeting several weeks back, and a young lady said to her mother, I'm going to the prom. And the mother said, you can't go. I'll not make your dress. She said, I'll go if I have to go in my underclothes. This was a young lady who was always at church, yet she was saying, I'm going to have a good time. I'm going to feast. Ladies and gentlemen, God's looking for some squares today who will be willing to be different and to stand different in order that he may spare the land. But you say, preacher, go ahead and preach. Say what you want to. I'm going to have me a big time because I don't know when I may die. Listen to what God said. It was revealed in mine ears by the Lord of hosts. Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die, saith the Lord God of hosts. God said you refuse to weep. I'll make you weep. God said you refuse to live for me because you say we'll to die tomorrow. God said you will die. You will die. God said you won't get to die like you want to die. God said, what's that I see out there? Thus saith the Lord God of hosts, go get thee unto this treasure, even unto Shebna, which is over the house, and say, what hast thou here? And whom hast thou here that thou hast hewed thee out of sepulchre? Here is he that heweth him out of sepulchre on high, and that graveth a habitation for himself in a rock. Behold, the Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity and will surely cover thee. He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. There shalt thou die, and there the chariots of thy glory shall be the shame of thy Lord's house. And I will drive thee from thy station, and from thy state shall he pull thee down. God said, you said you'd die tomorrow. He said, you will. He said, I'd see to it that you die. But God said, you're not going to die like you want to die. Many of you listening to me today have already bought your cemetery lot. You've got your nice, pleasant cemetery lot where you intend to be buried, where they'll play sweet music across your grave and where the grass won't grow tall across your grave because somebody will always be cutting it. You've got your nice grave lot picked out. But God said, for your information, you'll not get to die where you want to die. He said, I'll toss you into a large country and there shall you die. In Ezekiel's day, that was Babylon. And it took him a long time to get there. In your day, it's not Babylon. It's Siberia. I'm preaching no doubt to folks today that will die in Siberia if you cannot find it in your heart to weep before God now. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll weep now or you'll weep out yonder. God said, you refuse to weep in my presence. You refuse to get right. God said, I'll let you die, but you will not get to die in this beautiful land of America. Instead, I'll turn and violently toss you into a large country and there let you die. I believe there are those right now listening to my voice that shall die at the hands of the communist oppressor in Siberia after being tortured day after day, month after month, and year after year, unless you're willing to stand in the gap before God in behalf of America now. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a late hour. It's an hour to weep our way back to God. Can God count on you? Or will God have to toss you into a large country and let you cry and weep and beg and plead out there? where it'll do no good. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, why many are saying it's too late? Can God count on you? You say, preacher, what can I do? You can stand when the rulers are running. You can stand and proclaim the problem in America is not social reformation, but spiritual regeneration is what's needed. You can stand in the gap and say, friends, we must get back and make God first. We must get back and honor God's word, honor God's day, honor God's precepts. We must get back and weep before God and not say, Lord, we deserve your mercy, but say, God, we deserve your wrath. But would you spare us? Would you spare us? Oh, friends, will God be able to count on you? Can he count on you today? Can he count on you now to stand in the gap? May we at this moment bow our heads and our hearts in prayer and ask God to help us to get in the gap in behalf of him or in behalf of the land for him. Our Father, we pray that across America there shall be those that name the name of Christ who will weep their way back to you that we may see you spare this land of ours. Lord, we don't deserve your mercy, but would you give us a little more time to get our house in order. Oh, God, spare thy people and may thy people once again cry out to you until you have your way in every heart and in every soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.